right, guys, welcome back. This is the Above Average FPL podcast. My name's Adam, and I'm joined by Baker. Evening, mate. Evening, mate. Free hit time. Free hit time. Yes, mate. We're also joined by FPL Spaceman. Uh, that is JC there, sitting above the clouds. How you doing, mate? You all right? I'm very good. good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. No good problem. Welcome aboard. Good Actually season. in space. <laughs> Literally. Wow. Well, yeah. It's either this or a blurred background. This was this was much more appropriate. I think. <laughs> Don't give it away. You like being much. Uh, this is real. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> rewind. Rewind. Um. Yeah. Let's start free, again. Free. <laughs> right, guys. Welcome. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I don't. Um. Yeah. Free hit game week twenty nine. We're all there. I guess. Is that correct? I haven't pressed the button yet, but uh, I, I think I have three players. So. I, yes. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll be there. I hope. <laughs> as long as I remember to press it. Good stuff. When safe? When are we allowed to press it? Oh, I don't know. Probably I think tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. I think tomorrow I'm going to do it. I've Post pressed pressing. the button. There's no, there's no drama in, in pressing the button early. We're You're going to look very silly when... Uh, I don't know what happens. Meteorite or something. I mean, <laughs> meteorite comes this down. This is a man from space. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll see he's what got, I can do. He's got advanced warning. Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll all be in trouble, I think, if one of those things comes down. So yeah, um, I think, I mean, my, I think my free hit chip will probably might be the least of my worries. <laughs> I, I don't really know why I haven't pressed the button. I've just I've been waiting. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, there was potential like people try and get price changes and stuff for uh, eking the budget out. But then someone pointed out quite early on in the season, early on in the week, that even the most expensive team you can afford with fixtures has like six million in the bank. So yeah, great, depends- very exciting, isn't it? Depends if you're going to bench wank, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, you might want Haaland and Salah, and it's 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 not it's an option. You can do it. I think you it's can good. do it. I think you can have some. Fun Are you going to do it? I think I might. I think I, I still but think I might. Can you do it with an attacking player though? Like, because if you want to do the like, I think you no, can do it with you, no. You can't do it with keeper, an attacking player. Or you can do it with the last defender. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can do keeper and last defender. I don't think you can get any further than that. Bench wanking a keeper on a free hit. Is the, le- is the most boring way to do something really risky. It's like, oh, I'll just play Edison and put Flecken on the bench. Like, yeah. what, what, are you, what are you doing? Because as soon it. as the game refreshes, it's going to put him straight on as well because Flecken plays in the first game. Yeah, good. It's, nice. so, stu- it's so stupid. Still might do so, it. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. But, I'm, but I'm, there, I'm there for those live FPL, you know, the live FPL when you go down in rank pre-auto subs and then you go up in rank post-auto subs. That's, that's the screenshots that I want to see. It's a pro move. It feels better. So it must be, must be the right thing to do. Exactly, exactly. Um, so you're having a good season, JC. It's going quite going quite well for you. Um, yeah. I I don't I don't know what to say. I, I mean, <laughs> my players have scored some points. Uh, ranked what four hundred and something. I don't know. I I mean, it's not four hundred k though, is it? It's four hundred and was it four hundred sixty yeah. something? Four twenty four in it. I don't. I mean. You know, but I do. I don't know. Don't even know. Don't even know. Don't You're three figure rank. Don't even know. Doesn't, doesn't matter. I mean, there's less numbers to remember, isn't there? But um, um, yeah, I just I don't feel I've done anything differently. Uh, well, that, even yeah, but what season. was your rank last season? <laughs> it was nine hundred nine. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, maybe. But then I don't feel I've done anything differently to the season before that. I mean, or like you know, when I was I was like four million after the first six or seven weeks. And then just kept doing the same thing and trust the points come in. And I got to like game double game at 25 and I didn't have any Liverpool players. And I was like, oh, my Trent's injured. I've got to buy Van Dyke. I'm not taking any hits. And then, uh, yeah, I watched the first half of Liverpool Brentford and both of them go off injured, Jota and Darwin. And I'm like, oh, well, must have been, must have been a good pick for me to dodge them. I don't know. It just, it's things just keep coming in in the last 10 weeks. Um, so, it's not great advice, is it? Just get lucky, but um, it's, it's, no. But it's it's fine. I mean, you have yeah, to like, like, like occasionally. It's not occasionally unenjoyable. It's come no, I still very much enjoy <laughs> being this highly ranked. But uh, yeah, I just I think I've, I've, I mean I think I've played well as well. Like it's not like I've just done anything stupid. But yeah. um, yeah, like there are lots of people who played just as well as me, if not better, who aren't this highly ranked. So well, I'll enjoy it. But um, yeah, <clears throat> I noticed that. Uh, Yes, I saw that in the, uh, for those that don't know, the analytics discord, 
right, you're like, what, 400 off, but you're not even in the top 20 in the analytics discord. No, no, I'm, I'm way down. Um, yeah, That's I think, insane. I think, I think we've got like nearly 10 people in the top 100, uh, which is for, it's a mini league of like 200, 250 people. And it's an open discord as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not everyone's, you know, like, <clears throat> I don't know. It's not like it's hidden or joy or whatever. And obviously like, you know, people who join tend to be the ones who are active on the discord. But um, yeah, we say it every week, you like, you get a big green arrow in all your mini leagues and overall. And you look at your analytics leagues in big red um, or something silly. I think we've got 2% of the top 10K is in our, is in our mini league. Is I mean, it, I, yeah. I'm in that Discord. I ain't joining the league. <laughs> I've been bringing it down. Right. I'm not doing yeah. that stuff. <laughs> I, might join I, mean, the, I might join the Discord. Just I might join the mini league just to bring it down. Just for, yeah, just come for on fun. in, everyone. No, I, yeah. I, am in the, I am in the Discord already as well, but it's, it's like one of the most complicated Discords. It's like... There's so many arms and legs coming out of every different every different channel and chat. It's, it's, it's nuts. gone a bit crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've been in it a few years now, and I remember it, earlier on it was yeah much more straightforward. And well, I mean, we like having more people in it, and it's like-minded people, and we're very open to new people. And there's a lot of people who are very knowledgeable, but very happy to to teach and explain and you know discuss new things. So it's it's a good breeding ground for new ideas because there's lots of people who are pretty switched on um but also any newbies who want to learn more about analytics as you plug check out sir Telt's discord yeah, yeah i think i think that just in general what i find interesting with it obviously is there is a huge amount of discussion that goes on it's busy right whereas yeah. we've seen you know today fpl reviews released the uh fact that now they'll show you different tips tip strategies and people are saying well that's the end and i'm like no, if it was the end, why would so many people be discussing stuff in that disc? If you just go and see in that Discord and you see the amount of chat, like if people do think it is just press a button, solve, and it's done, like it's, yeah, it's not that game, is it? We're we're also chatting a lot of nonsense as well. Like I think a huge part of the game is just talking football and FPL with your mates. Like it's still that to all of us as well. It's just that we're thinking about it in a slightly different way, which you know so we discuss about it and actually like i think someone was talking about um the way that we try and tie narratives into what's happening in football is like if you're down the pub and you're talking about who do you think is going to win the league like we could we could talk for hours about city or liverpool or arsenal and all the different factors but actually the real answer is it's probably something like 30 percent liverpool 30 percent arsenal 40 percent man city and and you can't really extrapolate much more than that. But that's boring. That's like, <laughs> like it's it's true. It's the answer. It's like we don't know. Things will happen that we can't predict. The player gets injured. Uh, you know, string of bad results. Lucky bounces of the ball. We don't know who's going to win, which is why it's exciting to talk about. But also the actual evaluation of what move should I make based on who's going to win the league is roughly an even split at the minute. So yeah. we talk about it all the time, but then I think the thing is, this is what I try and do, is I try and separate the the decision-making from the discussion almost in some ways. Is like when I'm making a transfer for my FPL team, that's separate to um, what am I thinking about the football. And then I have my team that has resulted from this decision-making process that I then watch at the weekend and... I can celebrate Ilya Zabani scoring a goal because he's happened to end up in my team and that's that's fun. Um, but uh, yeah, it's you know we're still chatting loads of loads of nonsense. You should see match chat on a on a weekend. It's full of the same crap you see on every other Discord server. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's not it's not the end of the game. Yeah, it's no. not. For anyone, um, as you mentioned, for anyone that wanted to join that, I've dropped the I dropped an invite link into um, into the chat for the analytics discord i have no idea whether that only invites one person though so it might just be the first person that clicks it get in oh well yeah but, lucky uh, draw but <laughs> so if that's you there well you done but if, if multiple people can get in through that then cool um yeah just go go check it out incredible season though mate um so we're now to free hit 29 yeah i i said to you earlier um well i said i was going to ask you earlier about this question so so you know we expect a really well prepped answer you know we don't do much prep in this world mm -hmm. but one of the things is when when i look 
to this week is the games all look really close. The therefore the predicted points for most players is really really close, and then you know for you with the analytics background, I'm like, how much do you then punt versus how much do you think? Well, that one's predicted slightly more than that one, and is that is that enough to tip you in, in scales? And I guess the other thing is probably a little bit on ownership. You know, mm-hmm. is is um. Does it have any factor into what you're thinking on free hit? Yeah, I think after expected value or the projected points, ownership's probably the next most important thing on free hit. Um, there's also things to do with like people like to stack against the team. So load up on an attack or load up on a defense because if it comes in, it comes in big. And if it loses, it loses big. So you increase your relative um or your objective variance, so that you know you're gonna score lots of points or not many points. Um, which is what you do in like daily fantasy stuff, is you'll you'll load up on teams because you, you want to try and win or it doesn't matter if you fail. Whereas in a season long thing, if you're making transfers, then every move you make has an effect on the next 10 weeks or so. So you've got to be a bit more careful with oh, he's point one projected less this week, but he's a differential because if you buy him, then you've got to see what happens. 10 weeks down the line, which is why it's a bit fiddly. So I think a lot of people, I'm sure, especially for free hit 29, uh, will be doing the stereotypical pretty much like top of the projections, put them all together, put that in. And I don't think that's wrong, especially for free hit 29, because it's one week. You just put that in. You won't go wrong if you do that. But again, there's this thing about we are discussing all these different picks. We're discussing which, I don't know, fifth defender to put third on the bench and that's that's why the game's fun um so i think within a small margin because i'm quite highly ranked i'm quite happy to increase my ownership differential to the field to try and get a bit higher which is i think sometimes what i've done i've happily gone i captained wang he chan a couple weeks ago when most people went for harland and a few people went for saka because it looked pretty close and i was like oh well that's Free risk is what people call it. You want the risk. It's not you're not paying expected value points. They were all pretty much the same in the markets, in the models. Maybe you can disagree, but I thought close enough. I don't know. Um, so it's not so much the I don't want Forest attacker against the Luton defender. It's more that actually, for example, I might have been looking at going without Ollie Watkins, which now might be what everyone does. Um, <laughs> but he was quite close to people like Morris and Wood and Awini and those guys in the projection. So for a small dip in projected goals, you could get a big jump in or jump the other way. Effective ownership against, basically, because he's so highly owned. So you can create algorithms and models and equations to almost solve for that if you want to give an actual weighting to it and people are doing some quite interesting work and that's one of the things that um fantasy football trout was talking about post this game solved thing is actually you know it's it's solved in this in this linear sense of how we might want to maximize expected value but actually you're trying to get the highest rank so there is a balancing game between you know how much EV might want to buy. And because it's free hit, your players are gone next week. It doesn't matter. So if I put John Duran in, it's not going to scupper me for the rest of the season. I hope not. Um, but he's gone. He's not in my team next week. So there is a chance to do something a little bit risky with it. But I think that comes down to play style. That's not so much like a this way's better, this way's worse. It's how much risk do you want to engage in? Uh, and how do you want to do that? So if you're chasing a mini league leader, then you can see who's in his team. Maybe he's free hitting and maybe that's a bit harder to do, but you can try and go against them to catch up. If you're leading your mini league, get a little bit safer. Um, but we are quite limited in the picks that are available this week. I mean, there's only eight teams for one, but also <laughs> like I, you're not going to go without Son or Madison or Tony probably. Well, we'll see. Um, like there, there's quite a few soft locks and quite a few players who go, well, I'm probably picking between these four or five strikers. 
I'm not going to put in, I don't know, Jay Rodriguez playing. Um, I don't someone think he's playing. No. I don't know. All right. I'll, I'll stick with Fafana then. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's th that's that's the kind of way I'd engage in risk is going effective ownership more so than going stacking. But either either works. Depends how you want to play it. Yeah, yeah. it's a good point that. I do love a stack. I am I am one where like Stacks are I, fun. I, yeah. I am I'm like the anti hedge guy. I do just don't not that I don't see the value not that I don't see the value in, in, in hedging it, but I just don't I just think that the in a free game where your prize is essentially a stress ball, like who cares? Like just have some yeah. have some fun with it and just you know if you get hit with some bad variants, then fine. It's just it's just one of those things and you know, we've got another eight weeks to go or ten weeks to go. Something like nine weeks, mm. ten weeks to go. So okay. you know, there's 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 plenty there's plenty of uh, plenty of stuff that can that can happen. And uh, yeah, I'm also in a place where I've had like, yeah. I, granted, I came from like five point two million, but twelve green arrows in a row, twelve green arrows in thirteen weeks. I'm you know I'm just riding on the crest of a wave at the moment. So it feels like you're you informed. Know, yeah, I mean exactly. You're informed. I'm informed. Yeah. So uh, you know, and we've got the fixtures, and we've got the fixtures. <laughs> <laughs> sort of absolutely john duran has just scored boys has he oh my goodness Doug Louise is Aston Villa. Villa. he's got, he's got two the assists trade. but then he, yeah, has no john, he, has, he has no john mcginn does he this weekend yeah aston no. villa are 3-0 up so huge great night for the coefficient <laughs> yeah cheers boys. Well, uh, yeah <laughs> um, um should we move on to uh should we move on to games or are we we have enough with, yeah. with what we've let's covered so far cool let's move on to games so as always, we bring up the wonderful, uh, wonderful graphic from Rob T. FPL um, data coming from SpreadX. I realise that I probably used the. Is this the old data or is this the new data? This is uh, I think the new data. The, I think. Well, I hope it is. Uh, yeah, that's the new one. Because it was updated. Yeah, okay, cool. they've. Um, this is how all, late we prepared. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much all the numbers have gone up very slightly since um, since he posted it last. Um, what well, everyone's goals. Not everyone, but like the ones that have gone up have gone up. Not like well, that sounds obvious. Yeah. Um. No one's no one's gone down. <laughs> so we're expecting um, more goals. The overall number of goals has gone up very slightly. So maybe so it's, we've got well, it might be twelve and a half now. We've got eight teams. We've got nobody with a clean sheet percentage above thirty percent. Yeah. Good. We've got nobody with a. Uh, we always look every week for and read out the teams that have got like over two expected goals. We've got none of them. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So everyone's going to score some and maybe no one scores a lot. I think someone said, uh, so four one ones, thanks to Rob on Twitter, which I quite enjoyed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Four one ones. Yeah. That'll do. Um, yes. It's a very exciting week. It's time to attack. I think this is where we, we play one of those. Expensive chips we've been given in um, four games with not many goals. Perfect. But what could go wrong? But, but you you did you did highlight quite an interesting stat to us earlier uh, in the chat, sort of pre to this. That yeah. there's actually a higher chance of one of these teams scoring five goals than there are to be no clean sheets. Five or more, yeah, yeah. Than there are than, than there is to be no clean sheets. Yes. The issue is is that that doesn't account for who scores five plus goals. So it's just any team. Oh yeah. Well. Um. But yeah. So but basically, I think what I wanted to try and highlight was that these numbers are like the central point of a distribution. So, sure, Burnley have projected one point three goals, but there's like a a one percent chance they score four. There's like a four percent chance they score three, and like a fifteen ish percent chance they score two. So, they can score more goals. It's not like Oh, they scored three. Oh, the models hadn't accounted for this, which is what some people seem to say sometimes. It's like, well, it said 1.3 and they scored three. It's like, well, actually, they're less likely to score three than they are to score one or none. But, um, you know, we will probably see a team score. I think it's it's like roughly, I assumed a, a pass on distribution for these. I don't know if I'm putting too many people off, but that's yeah, goals, goals tend to follow a distribution that is roughly like the Poisson distribution. It's just how often you'd get what zero, one, two, three from this. Um so if we assume that, then there's about a fifty percent chance that two or more teams score 
three or more goals and about a 50% chance that a team or more scores four plus goals. So we don't know who that is. And obviously you're, you're kind of gambling. But if you if you buy into that stack, you triple on forest attack, who knows, then you can come good. You can get loads of points. It's not like there won't be points available. It's just that we don't really know who, which is the fun bit. We have to pick our t- players. Um, fun bit. So Spurs are more likely to score lots of goals than Burnley are. But, you know, so you can load up on those. I'm sure a lot of people have Son, Madison and probably Poro or Dogi, but might get tempted by a Brennan Johnson or a Timo Werner or something. Yeah, it's... Don't know. I mean, for us, because Spurs hands of it, looking at it, like yeah, Brennan's, yeah. Brennan's been fantastic. Like he Do is... you fancy him? The difficulty is that, so he comes on in the game before last and was played on the right and was superb, changed the game. Mm. Um, but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have started the the, the Villa game if Timo hadn't got a knock. So, mm. you know, his Timo did have a knock, hence why Brennan starts. There's no real reason for Timo to have not been there. But Brennan's obviously played really well again, so he's been our best right winger in a game he's been our best left winger in a game and you're like you want a position for him but he also can be our best left or right winger so he's also a brilliant sub and he's been playing that role really really well um and our leagues haven't been particularly great like like for for us it's obviously it's half five game and um so it'll be like four hours before we don't get we don't get anything from the club really. We 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 get pretty Not straight really. up news from Ange on injuries, but we don't get yeah. like this is the team. This person's playing. Da da da. This yeah. person's bench. We don't get that. I think that's kind of ideal as a fan, not as an FPL. Mm. Yeah, but like that's what you want. You don't want leaks, but you want to know what's going on. I'm a Newcastle fan, and I'm like, who the fuck's fit? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Eddie gives his press conference, and he's like, yeah, Gordon's not playing. It's like, oh no, and then he does. Um, so we do the predictions with like Emma jump the wave. Um, and basically, if you know who's fit, the team tends to pick itself at the minute. But the main guess is like, do you think Isak's back? I don't know. What did Eddie say? He said he's not back. What is he back? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you know, you just want to know who's fit. I haven't got a clue. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the tactical stuff's more fun than trying to predict. The trying to read the mind games of whatever managers say mm. stuff is uh not as fun, but um, yeah, yeah. Okay. But we Maddo. know we know Maddo, and we know some will play. We know that. I think we... everyone's going to have them in. I don't see um, much a reason to go against that. I like Brennan. I really like yeah. him for this game. Um, but the one place where we have got a load of choices is the midfielders. That is true. Um, yeah. And the one place we haven't got a lot of choices is the defenders. And therefore, I'm like, well. For me, like Poro is the best defender on here that I could pick. So, yeah, for me, I'll I'll, I'll stick with Poro over it. That we talked on the weekend, like Romero, technically from a potential to score, because mm. if Van der Ven's out, then potentially, then I expect all headers to go his way. Albeit Dragosin's scored goals over in Genoa, so that doesn't mean that he um necessarily you know does go to to Romero but and then baseline Romero has been incredible but it's just like do I want to do I want to the risk yeah well yeah <laughs> you go back, to the, go back to the ownership question don't you because like mm. those that are not free hitting very likely have Poro so do you do you need to not take... many people have Poro now but do you need to take that risk no ownership though is he yeah I mean he's got like I guess he's bl- blank in 26 he yeah. might be he might be a popular pickup, but I guess he's probably not. If you're trying to if you're short of players and you're only going to get eight or nine out or ten, then you're probably not going to hit for a defender. You're going to mm. hit for a, an attacker. So he's probably not the biggest transfer in. I've Maybe not really been yeah. looking at. Maybe not. I mean, like our fixtures as well from thirty two onwards are not great. So yeah. I, I can't even see that being long term. Yeah. Even if they do bring him in, to be fair. So if they if there isn't that many, would you say fourteen percent? 
something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. I was looking at bringing him in in game week thirty, so maybe I'll, I'll rethink that. We've just got we've yeah. just got a basic. I mean, it's up to, it's up to you how you want yeah. to read it, but we've got a four week we've got a four week run of Newcastle, Liverpool, City, Arsenal, and then Chelsea mm. in there somewhere. Yeah. So it could be those five in a row. Um. So yeah, it's just 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 one to be aware of. So that's I guess Tottenham's pretty pretty straightforward. Now, would you be looking at any of the Fulham players at all? Because I've I mean, I'm tinkering with Muniz potentially. You know, he's just been like his his numbers are so much better than the others around mm. his price. He's just very busy as a striker. Price 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 doesn't matter here, does it? No, but what I mean, no, but what yeah. I mean, when because people are looking at like Morris and well, it's just basically him versus Morris as a as a as, as a choice, I guess. You know, I mean, to throw Chris Wood and Fafana and yeah. those guys in. I mean, they're all uh, not great, are they? But um, yeah, Muniz is one I'd throw in. I think like you could feasibly go for an Andreas or a everyone's favorite Willian. Which everyone should have had already. The problem was minutes on them, though, isn't it? Because like William yeah. doesn't start. Andreas then came off early on the last. Literally all of them. The only one that played ninety is is the Wobi, which yeah. is you know created seven open play chances last game and so forth. But again, when you've got so little midfielders to pick from, the idea that I would go Wobi doesn't feel right. Um, I think I think the other thing on on Tottenham though. And this is, you know, probably likely to blow up in our face because this is what Tottenham do to us. Is defensively, bar the Wolves game where we had both our fullbacks out, the three other games, it's like one XG between three games in open play. Like, like that from one and a half XG per game conceded to suddenly, oh, we've got all our players back and now we're bashing teams up. Like, you can't expect, as a Tottenham fan, if I didn't play FPL and you said to me, what do I predict us to play against Fulham this weekend? I didn't know all of this stuff. I'd be like, we're smashing Fulham. Well, I often say we'll, we'll win 8-0. And, <laughs> yeah. But I would... What's it? Never trust fans? Is that what people yeah, say? Yeah, but I don't yeah. think there's many Spurs fans that won't yeah. be going, we want to win 3-0 this weekend. And it's a, you know, it's a big old arrogant statement, but... Do you think there are fans who would say they don't want to win 3-0? Is that what you think? <laughs> yeah. But they'd be like, well, just get the, very points, get the points yeah, yeah, type yeah. stuff. Don't want to but, embarrass them. But, like defensively, even without Van der Ven, you know, and if Dragerson steps in, the fact that Basuma is back, the fact that we've now got Saul or Benton Kerr, you know, that, that can play one of those on the bench every game, Hoiberg came off the bench was really good. Like, there's just so much more midfield for us than we had a few weeks ago. If there's one team you've got our back for the defence, it's, it's, it's Tottenham this week, I would say. I'd comfortably put us the most likely to clean this weekend. Well, the the bookies don't, as we see. Um, but let's put some money on. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's there's no one really at Fulham who stands out as like a a really exciting, brilliant. Pit. Munoz is the one that you might want to go for. So mm. it's not like we're turning down a big asset and going, no, I don't want Fulham because I back Spurs. You're turning down someone who's at best arguably similar to another player that you'd pick. So if you don't, you know, especially if you're a Spurs fan, like, why not just not pick Fulham players? That's, if it's really close, that's a valid reason as a tiebreaker. Um, so, I, th- yeah, I I think there's... No one's... J- Sorry, Fulham fans. Um, no one's jumping out to me. Uh, so, yeah, Moon is worth a punt if you fancy them. But if you don't, I wouldn't feel like... I wouldn't get FOMO over any Fulham players. I'm glad. I'm glad you yeah. stuck up for Fulham fans because yeah. we got some shit the other day saying we don't know anybody outside the Big Six. So, mm-hmm. um, in in a comment, so this this is the one where you know one team gets five plus goals and it's Fulham, and we look really silly <laughs> now as well. We're all getting sound clipped. That'd be a terrible weekend oh, if that happens. Yeah, nailed, nailed, nailed. Yeah. Um, move on then. Brentford and Burnley. Ah, oh, perfect. It's obviously you need to like Tony's on the picture here. But he's been shit, and yeah. obviously, obviously, they've got the best chance of a clean sheet. So, of course, we just triple up on defence, don't we? They just, just to yeah. know. I looked, I looked earlier on Flecken. Last eighteen games, how many cleans? Two, one, one. Yeah, makes sense. He's due. Exactly. Exactly. Eighteen yeah. games. 
Yeah, but like, Pickford, crazy, like, like Pickford was like ten games, and then, then like five weeks later, he had the most clean sheets in the league. We just we just won one game. So we <laughs> I think was it was it like game week seven or eight when people were wild carding and Ariola had more points than Edison, but he hadn't kept any clean sheets and Edison had kept like three, <laughs> and, he, and he had more points than him. So yeah, keepers don't need clean sheets. Nice. Yes. I, yeah, I mean, I I don't. There's no the keeper here is just whatever one I've got some spare team available from and I'll just double up on our defence I don't think there's any keeper that's going like oh a Vicario might be good but he blocks a Spurs spot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so Definitely. you don't do that so I mean it probably is Flecken or Cells or do we just pick Kaminsky. a busy do we just pick a busy keeper that might clean so like Kaminsky might clean against they Forest, all, for example they all might clean. they all might clean <laughs> sorry <laughs> I'm being rude here. no no, yeah. no that's fair no that's fair <laughs> Like none of, none of them probably will clean, and all of them ah. probably won't clean, but one of them will probably, and we don't know. So you pick whoever. That helps. I guess the interesting one is if, <laughs> if, <laughs> Love that. if we find out tomorrow that Watkins is out, yeah. is Ariola back on the menu? Maybe. I mean, yeah. You it's feel like it's full like... protection there as well, because like non-free hitters are well. I mean, non-free hitters get the downside of no Watkins, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, then, then you but, can't cover them. You can't. You cover them with the free hit, getting Ariola in, so they can't go, gain from there. And then suddenly you gain an attacker on them, which is massive. In terms of like, in terms of like busyness, like suddenly Ariola, might, but but you know, not necessarily the greatest finishers in the world. Like suddenly Ariola might become a better pick tomorrow. Um, we've seen Burnley repeatedly have many many shots without scoring. So I do still fancy that like we've seen Burnley get to 1.3 expected goals many many times with no goals um and that's always good for a keeper is that is that Burnley will dominate I do think this game set up you know we always go back to the old Brentford didn't win a game last season when they had more possession well this is a perfect one Burnley will have more possession than Brentford in this game which suits them um to a T I reached out to uh fpl dummy tom on um uh on twitter to just ask him a bit about um i asked him a couple of questions because obviously um burnley are the worst at set pieces in the league comfortably in terms of conceded um and brentford up with everton have had the most set plays set piece xg this season so brentford had 12 set piece xg which it's pretty good. You know, the teams, are, there's no, there's what, one, two, three, four, five, six teams in double figures in that space. But um, Burnley and Villa <laughs> have been the team that have conceded the most, you know, Burnley have conceded 14 set police goals um, this season and from 12 XG conceded. Um, so I was interested because obviously Reg, Reggie, I was like, if Jensen plays, because Jensen hasn't started the last two games and I'm like, hmm. If he doesn't start, then that's fantastic news. Is Reggie on to probably have all the corners? Um, but Norgard got ruled out today, which probably means that Jensen does play. Does think they'll share them. What he did say is that um, because I said about Tony, because I was looking at the sort of pass maps and stuff, and and it looks very much like Whistler plays the number nine and Tony's playing the number ten at the moment. Um, and he said that happens a lot when they play the three at the back when they play a sort of three, five, two, almost type position. Um, Tony will be the one that links in between. He does expect that they'll move to four, three, three this weekend. Um, and if so, again, we might get leaks on this game. If it looks like potentially or the predicted things all suggesting a four, three, three, then that puts Tony back at the nine and we'll put a whistle back on the wing. Um, which, Changes a lot. Changes a lot um, for them. So, yeah, for me, I guess if they're four at the back, though, I mean, does that make Flecken even worse? <laughs> like, do I want them? Do I want them to have 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 uh, more guys in front of them? Yeah, I don't know. I suspect I'll. I suspect I will go Flecken and Reggie. Like doubling up on Brentford defence doesn't feel good, but nothing feels good, does it? This is FPL. It's all paint. 
It's not pain for you, mate. Like, you, like well. you don't get to claim this game. <laughs> I've, I've had bad before. before. I've, I've, yeah, just, yeah. I've just got it back into the top million for the first time since game week three. So <laughs> Very enjoyable. Isn't it, it good, is, isn't it? What a enjoy- lovely game. What a lovely game. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so... I, 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 basically, I think pick your keeper last. I don't, I don't think there's a keeper here. You should be swaying where your free hit goes. Like just mm. pick the rest of the team and see which one you want to pair up with. Yeah. Um, probably. Fair enough. Fair enough. So then... Luton, Luton boys, Luton boys. Do we want like obviously they can yeah. score, but they can concede a shit ton as well. So do we need do we need a Chong or can we can we go to like a Chong or a Barkley or a, instead of a, a standard like Morris? Uh, like Doughty feels like a lock, obviously. Yeah, I think there's just not enough defenders that Doughty's got enough attacking returns. I just put him in. Not really worry about it. All the set pieces, all the you know everything, an assist in the week as well. Um, form in form. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. I think you could even double up with Kaminsky if you if you weren't fancying Forest. Um, I would. I'm not looking too much at the midfielders. They're still quite varied in the minutes. It's a bit like the Fulham thing, I think. But and also a lot yeah. of their players are listed as forwards. I got that right. Yeah, they're playing like like Adebayo is injured, but he was he was playing as like a winger and then. Ogbene, is he a forward but plays in midfield? Sometimes so wing like back. a wing back, yeah, exactly. So um yeah, I don't I there's not really Barkley's pretty nailed and it's pretty good. Um yeah. Morris should play. I think he takes the pens as well. So I I'm not looking too far beyond those guys. But a Chong or someone, if you if you fancy one of the midfielders for minutes, I think I'd double up. I wouldn't go for one of them over. Barkley or Morris or Doughty, but I don't know. I think um, I think there's a lot of people that want to take them on a little bit. I don't see many people wanting to take Doughty on, but I do think there's a quite a lot of people want to take Morris on. Um, and I can feel it as well. And it's what I mean by that is there's that piece of knowing, well, non-free hit 29 people. Quite popular, yeah. Quite popular. You know, the, the, certain Doughty's been in all their teams. Like, so... When you're adding the free hit guys, he's going to be like 80, 90 percent owned. Again, for a team that just mm. conceded free midweek and conceded. Who who the thought? It's yeah, bad, yeah. The the loot the Luton defender, he'll have ninety percent ownership one week. What, what are you t- what? <laughs> what a great what a great game, isn't it? It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, yeah, you can take him on. Morris. And then Morris, yeah, I think he was about twenty odd percent owned last week and then you add in the free hit guys that will have him, especially yeah. if Watkins is out, then it'll be like 70, 80% owned type stuff. And it's like, do you take on Luton? But if they're away, I definitely would. The fact they're at home, they're good at home. Yeah. I mean they're, they're good at they're home. They're okay. Well I mean they beat us. A... Beat us. Well <laughs> they're still a I mean, it's still a relegation no, level team. No, we, we won late. Oh, we, we win. Oh, we did win late. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Van der Ven scored, didn't he? Yeah, and then we won late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we had 10 men. We had 10 men. Yeah, yeah, we had 10 men but, for ages. That's it. Yeah. But they're, de- they're, they're decent. They're not. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think. I mean, look at the look at the protected goals in this 1.45 versus 1.6. This I mean, is they're, like. They're a... playing Forest, though. They're, I mean, like, mm. like I, I don't know what to make of Forest. Like, I, I'm so. Mm. Like, people they say. Go back to that comment. We don't know, know anything outside the top six. I know nothing about Forest other than they've got a shit ton of players that I don't really care about. Uh, they're in the relegation zone now. I didn't even know yet. that. I didn't even know that. Oh, no. I know. No, they, they were. They oh, were. They were. Time on Wednesday. That was it. They were in it and then yeah. Luton lost. So is that it? There you are. So, see, so, see, we do know about Forest. We know that they're <laughs> not very good. Um, but that, you know, that makes this big, this game. It is a big, big game. Yeah. Does that, do you think that ties into it in any way? That this is a, was it a six, six pointer? pointer? Literally, it is a six pointer. Yeah. So um, more goals, less goals. Well, Forest as well, obviously, could be facing the penalty as well. So therefore, technically, Luton might be clearer. Forest going to this. Uh the points. I was confused. I thought I was like, yeah. have Luton just been given a a Morris penalty, a points penalty? Yeah, yeah, points penalty. I, sorry, we're talking about talking, penalties. And I was like, of, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, talking about penalties. Like, don't we just do we just not just get all the penalty takers? Probably. Well, well, Morgan Gibbs White and Morris in this Morgan, game. Morgan Gibbs White. So we, so we just get. I don't know who Chris takes Wood. Burnley. 
<laughs> yeah. Tony. Is it Wood or is it what? Gibbs White. Go take the pens. No one Probably Gibbs White, but Wood. Wood's a shout. He might come off early. He might get rested, Gibbs White. Don't know he's starting for sure. He, he didn't start Alanga or Hudson Adoy in midweek, did he? Mm. So is he it is it Gibbs White's turn? Yeah, I mean Alanga, like we just watched Semenyo just just destroy that left hand side. Um for Luton. If Alanga plays down the right, like he could have fun. You could it's just you could just have minutes. fun owning Alanga. You could have fun owning Alanga. We could. Yeah, there's some good forest picks, I think. Um, there's quite a few attacking ones. I don't know too much about picking their defence. I think Sells may be in goal. But, um, I think Nico yeah. Williams is playing well. Like, I do yeah. genuinely think he's playing well. Um, it's like Murillo's the only one that's nailed, isn't he? Or oh, Nico yeah. play. No, I think that, so. Yeah. It was Montiel that they signed, wasn't it? But he's yeah. injured, or still injured. He certainly was. You know. Um, World Cup winner. He scored the winning, mm. winning pen. Or have I got it mixed up? He scored the winning pen. Yeah. So um, maybe he takes penalties from the injured spot on the bench. Um, yeah, Nico's good. I think Murillo as well. I, I, yeah, Gibbs White, Alanga, Wood. How many was looking quite good, but we're not sure on minutes. Just minutes. Just um, a killer on minutes. I was excited so. to own how many, but yeah, I, yeah. I won't go for it. Okay, we better finish off with West Ham Villa then. Hmm. Well, no so, Watkins and what was it? Five one, six one. What was the West Ham score? Four, uh, five nil. Five nil. Five so, nil. Five nil. Oh. Four nil. Oh, oh, they're both one. All right, so yeah. five five four. This game maybe. Um, yeah, I did some good picks here. I think uh, in attack probably because I think defensively. Well, we said that about every we, game. We, we haven't got defensively. We haven't got any, we haven't got any attackers left because we've got three Tottenham possibly. Uh-huh. We've also yeah. got Gibbs White or Chris Wood, um, Morris, and maybe Barkley, plus Tony. Um, mm. And that's it. We, we, we didn't want a Burnley attacker. I don't think we got to a Burnley mm. attacker. Um, we didn't even float David Fafana as an option. But yeah, we're out of attackers, mate. So <laughs> what do we do? Where's, where's our all-out attack chip? Can we play that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah we need that back. Um, I, I mean, I was Bowen, I, Bowen, I'm putting Bowen in. I don't think I'd go <laughs> yeah. against him. Um, I quite fancy putting someone else alongside them, like a Pakatar or a Yeah or someone. But then again, you're short of mids. So um Watkins looked like quite a heavy lock for a lot of people, but I don't know. Leon Bailey, Douglas Louise, another pen taker. Pen taker. Pen taker, easy. Um he's he's got loads of points this season. I don't know how he's doing it, but um maybe he'll carry on. Nobody knows. It's so great, nice. isn't, it? isn't it? Amazing. But I was convinced before tonight that, and I was, you know, manifesting one of them would have extra time and it, or both of them have extra time, and I'll just be able to leave it alone. I'll just have Watkins and Bowen, and I'll leave the rest. That was my yeah initial feeling was was let these go, pick up Forest mid instead, and have some fun with them. Um, I know Freiburg, you know. Were clear, they clearly they weren't good, they weren't good at all. Um, but Ajax like beat them 4 0. Mm-hmm. It's pretty big. I know they're missing Kamara and McGinn now in center of field. And hey, if Watkins is out as well, then I think that makes it easy. I'll definitely want a second midfielder for West Ham. I don't see myself doing Doug Louise, I don't see myself going there at all. Um, I don't you say that every week. <laughs> nah, I'll just say it every week. But I'm when he when he got, he'll, he'll be on the thumbnail, he... mate. On on Sunday, yeah, yeah. he'll be on the thumbnail again. Oh, Doug's done it again. What's the hell Doug's done that? another double digit, Doug. What a boy! Um, I just don't see myself doing it. I don't. I think there's um, is it not fun, fun to enough? be had? Yeah, Cresswell was fantastic actually tonight. But like, can he really? Can he really roll it out against Sunday? I'm not sure he can <laughs> do it again. Like, well, he's got the legs to do it. Have we um, been talking too long? We've got an Aaron Questwell deep now. Yeah, well, yeah. I was say, was was okay. is Emerson actually is Emerson injured then? He was like quite close, I thought, tonight as well. So the fact that it's a Sunday game, it's too far away, I'm like icky on it. 
I'm more tempted to say, um, yeah, you pick the extra midfielder. If you do want to put Watkins in, you could do what, this is the danger in it. You can just do Watkins, couldn't you, in a fifth midfielder. And then like the insurance is almost play like a West Ham midfielder. So go the fifth midfield, West Ham midfielder and play Watkins. And if Watkins does miss out, then you're suddenly doubling down with more West Ham players. That's um, one I'll, I'll, I'll probably think about. But um, I thought Antonio was on it, on it for West Ham tonight. And I think that just as soon as he's on it, it makes everybody else around them better. Apart from probably Pakatar, I would say. Because yeah. when Pakatar has been really good for him is when he's played like almost false nine. Like it's he's the one that's the main player. But when Antonio's there, he can suddenly there's a bit more distance. He can be the one that's the more older you think, type. Do you think role. Antonio can do it twice in a week though? That's it's, that's it's not thing. that long. Or Antonio. That's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. And I don't know where like, we'll get this. I think Pakatar's probably on pens if Ben Rama's not playing. It's kind yeah, of a yeah, bit yeah. up for debate. Like people think uh, War Prowse took one when Pakatar wasn't playing. War Prowse didn't play again tonight and was taken yep. up at half time. So I'm assuming Pakatar's on pens. And they are pen taker. Easy. Um but Kudus was fun. He's tonight. more fun, yeah. And his home record is ridiculous. Yeah. All his goals are at home. So do we want to look at teams? Yeah, yeah. teams. Going to move to teams. All the exciting players we just discussed. Yeah, so we'll start with you. We we'll start with you, Baker. I mean, you put this together today. I put this together <laughs> as soon as I saw Watkins go off the pitch. Perfect. The floor is yours. Hot off the press. Hot off the press. And I think, yeah, I think there's uh, at least. <laughs> Would you change seven anything of them? already? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Flecken, Doughty, Reggion, and Poro, I don't expect that to change. I really don't. And Son and Madison, I don't expect that to change. And Bowen, I don't expect that to change. So those seven in, plus Tony, eight in. So you really just play them with three players. Oh, three attacking. That's, that's, that's the game. So if Watkins is out, then I've currently got Morris, Kudus, and Gibbs White. In those three spaces, um, yeah. Do you just? I mean, I'm expecting that Watkins is fine, and you I think it's interesting. Yeah, I think the interesting one for me with this one is with those three players. Is which one of those would I drop out of Gibbs White, Kudos, and, and Morris? What about Watkins, John Duran, first bench? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, if Morris is the one that you take it off. But it's like, would I still want John Duran over Kudos, over Gibbs White, or over Morris? And I'm not I'm not sure I do. What? What? He's an amazing player. <laughs> I don't back. know. I've, I've never, I've barely ever seen him. I just got frustrated <laughs> whenever he kept coming on for the last 10 minutes for Watkins early in the season. Um, but he can bang, but, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure he's the man that I want. He's played every um, conference league game, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Um... So, yeah, I, I, those are the three positions. Yeah, and you add Watkins in and it's then three from four. Um, Gibbs White could be a langer. Again, I think we'll wait. Let's see press conferences. Let's see, see if we get any leaks. Work out what's there. I, I like a langer if, if I think he's playing. But again, it's like a langer and Kudus, the wingers, as opposed to Gibbs White and Pakatar, the pen takers. You're like, you know what's coming. You, you forgot Douglas Louise, I think, as well. I have not forgot Douglas Louise. <laughs> it's just not there. It's just not there. That's me done. Cool. Bosh. Uh, I made mine on Monday. This is I did this on Monday. Just straight in. So Watkins is still in there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I like stacking. I like players that don't play against players from the other positions, if that makes sense. So no attackers against defenders. I like all that stuff. So Fleck and Reggion and Collins are in there. Like Collins can be pretty much anybody. Could be Ruslev, could be whatever. Doesn't really matter. It's just a body for six points, hopefully. Um, Doughty, obviously. And then gone full Spurs midfield, Johnson, Madison and Son. Um, you know, it's it's really the last two games. As you say, if he wants to, if, if Ange wants to play Timo, he can play Johnson on the right. And he can even play Kulisevsky in eight if he needs to. 
Like, if he wants to play Timo, uh, sorry, if he wants to play Kulusevski, then he can play Johnson on the left. I just mm. think there's, and he's played so well. I think that he can can't do it. He can't do any more. Johnson cannot do any more to to to, to start a game. Start no. no. So can't do anymore. that's fine. And then Bowen, um, just filling out that midfield. Then uh, with the uh, with the Van der Ven injury, I was like, well, maybe if I punt on like a, a Muniz, it could be interesting, could be fun. Obviously, I've already tripled up on Brentford, so Tony slot is not there. And then Watkins and Morris up top. Um, nothing too exciting. That Watkins may change now. And then the bench is just whoever at the moment. I don't really care because I basically trust that the 11 that I'm going to pick are going to play, which means I might throw in like a, a Trent or something like that. <laughs> or, a, or something like that, just just for. But fun. they won't be on the bench if you throw them. That'll, be the that'll be fun. Yeah, they won't be. They won't be. They won't be on the bench. No. Which Which of your defenders would you bench rank? Do you think? Very uh, important. Doughty, obviously. Doughty. Highest yeah. owned, obviously. obviously. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Foolish yeah. of me. How what, a, what a silly question. It is a stupid, amateur. Yeah, mate, amateur. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pointless, and it winds people up, and that's why I keep doing it because that yeah. just winds people up. Like, what? What are you doing there? So, so when um when Fafana scores early on, then make sure to go to Twitter and put at above average FPL, yep. and uh, make sure, make sure to laugh at him because yep. that'd be funny. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what yep. I need. <laughs> You're welcome. There you are. It's engagement. This is I'm true. Out. This is true. Any uh any press is good press or something like that. Here's uh, yours. Yeah, JC. My team. Yes, my I came up with this. I th- I thought of this one. I didn't just press solve on review or anything. Um, it definitely wouldn't people... have John Duran, would it? Uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. It changes minutes. Well, John Duran, <laughs> that's pretty exciting. Um, why not? So I've I've gone Flecken, Roslev, Dorty, Poro, Son, Madison, Bowen, Paqueta, Tony, Duran, Morris. Um, so, I'd, yeah, most of the teams that are fairly well locked. Son, Madison, Tony, Dorty, Poro, Flecken, I don't know. Um. Yeah. Any Brentford defender, put them in. Why not? Who knows? Try and get lucky. Uh. I guess Ruslev. He's a wing back. He might get involved. Yeah. Um. Cool. I don't know. Just put any of them in. Uh. And then yeah, Morris. I quite like Morris. I think he takes pens and he's attacking and he'll. Well, he's a striker, I suppose. Um. I don't know. I just just put a few players. <laughs> this is really. I mean, I mean, half-hearted. You, you, I just put this, a few players in. Like, like we, like we started at quarter past nine. I asked you yeah. for this team at ten past nine, mm. <laughs> um, basically. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really wedded to it. I say, uh, yeah, yeah. it's great. It's close to my heart. Um, so, so me saying, like, why would you do? Why would you put Roslev in over Region? You don't really have a prepped answer for that, do you? I think he was. I think he was first on the list. Um, <laughs> yeah. friend, is that is that the advice you were looking for? Um, I like this is how you get a top five hundred rank. This is the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I mean, it'll probably be something pretty similar to this. I imagine. I think the the forward slots, apart from Tony, could change. Any of Duran if Watkins is out. Watkins if he's not. Morris uh, Wood. I think he starts. Quite. I mean, I do quite like Fafana, but I guess going up against Brentford defense. Um, and then yeah, Bowen. Akatar, Bailey, Douglas Louise, Gibbs White, any of those. It's it probably honestly is just whoever I fancy with ten minutes to go. Um, because I think it's it's a bit it's a lottery from from those places. So but it's just, um, no trust say, no trusting thing... a forest. No trusting a forest. Uh is this like my... an outside of your comfort zone feel then? Because like I know we spoke about it a bit earlier, but is this is this like outside of comfort zone? Because there isn't that sort of long term horizon to plan and to work I, with is it, is it that my, you just my, my care less about zone, it? my comfort zone is that i uh, we don't know what's going to happen and that is just there's so many outcomes so i think i'm actually like this every week uh <laughs> you, you, just lots of things could happen we don't know uh pick a team and hope it does well um and try and pick something that's robust for future and this one is doesn't have to be robust but yeah, we. I. It feels. I feel like this is my mantra and what I've been saying. We don't know what's going to happen. That's why it's exciting. Uh, <laughs> I will. I will buy some lottery tickets and see, see what happens. Um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, <laughs> that's a disillusioned response to. What's your free hit team? I don't know. That'll do. Yeah. I. Lo- I love it. That probably I, is what I'll do. With I, I absolutely so love it. That's um, uh, 
people yeah. should be liking the video for, for for that wonderful insight of how to get in the top 500 in the world. I've been so useless. Just, just, so just do something. We have no idea what's going to happen anyway. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. Good. Mostly luck. Yeah. It's all good. Pick, pick, pick someone that looks quite good and hope it does well. It's That's fun. the way. It's a fun That's game. FBL, baby. It's fun. <laughs> That's FBL, baby. Yeah. What a game. Cool. Well, it's been um, a pleasure. It has. Thank you, it has. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether there's any questions in chat. I'm just going to just have a quick scan. Um, the Watkins knee injury is a cut, not a muscle injury, is what Bozzy's oh. saying. So... In, in your, back in you come. Back in well... you come, Oliver. <laughs> you, can't, Oliver, you can't play Oliver, with a cut Oliver. knee. That's, that's dangerous. Back Don Durant will have to step in, yeah. Forrest, find out their points deduction tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. Uh, there could be is, some psychological that, impacts there. And Is that a reliable source? Uh, chat sport is the uh, wow. is the source, wow. so I'd, uh, I'd, I'd trust that. Um, Ooh. like if you had to pick between Kudus and Bowen, would you just go Bowen? Yes, I would, yeah, yeah. I think about double, I think about both, but I don't know if yeah. I'd swap them out. Yeah, um, John's just saying Watkins is staying in my free hit team. Uh, what, what advice would you give to non free hit players with Watkins in Watkins injury, like if he was out? I don't think it's worth the transfer out. Like, it, it, you presumably you're selling another player this week who has no fixture. Right? Like, you might as well sell them rather than Watkins, who might probably have a fixture. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think it's worth a hit to do Watkins to someone else. Yeah. So there, there are enough good strikers. Unless you're like definitely wildcard thirty, and you want to go for it, then maybe. But I I just play him and. And hope and yeah, take, take that as a oh, that's a shame. That was one of the slight disadvantages of, of not playing the free hit because injuries happen. I think it's yeah. fine. I, I think it's gonna right. be fine. Watkins, yeah. I wouldn't panic. I'd just uh, no, nah. I'd move cool. the captain's armband elsewhere if you were thinking of doing that, but otherwise, just but we haven't even mentioned that captain's son. Oh, son, son, yeah, fun. All right, there we are. Have fun, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good section. Is it, is it... I'll timestamp that. <laughs> Three seconds. Yeah. Son, son, son. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I don't think. Um, yeah, good, good process, boys. Well done. Um, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's it. We've we're just over an hour. I think that's okay. plenty of time to uh, to get this. Uh, well, I, I tell you what. If someone's listening at this point, you've already listened to everything. So that should be good for for people who are looking at free hitting twenty nine. Um, we gave like one line of advice for non free hitters, which is. Don't sell mm. Watkins. Top stuff. Um, JC, thanks for coming on, mate. And you have oh, a great season. Always. It's been, yeah, it's been good to chat. We said you said we met at Edinburgh. I I drank a lot uh, that briefly. Day. I I, yeah. I really met a few people. I think I was. I yeah. hadn't come top one k that point, so you probably didn't know who I was. Yeah, um, that's the <laughs> thing. No, um, it was good fun. Yeah, yeah. we right. should do something. What's What's the plan for this season? Like, the it, does the risk get? Riskier Ooh. to push. I think so. I think we can start pushing a bit further. I'm probably going to wild card late in like 35, 36, um, unless something unusual happens. And then I'll play it in 30. So, depending where I am then, I might have fallen off by doing something silly in the lead up. Um, then, wild card 36 into bench boost 37 with three weeks to go. You can do all sorts of crazy things there. I'll be excited. Um, yeah, and and throw your season away. That sounds fun. Because uh, that's the thing, isn't it? Because like back to back top one Ks sounds just for us. It's like yeah. that's just unbelievable. But when you're there, when you're there, that's fun. If if do whatever. If it if it helps me season before last, I I think in this game week I was about eight hundredth, and I finished twenty two K. So try to do better than that. Okay, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, I I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm happy to engage in that risk. I play quite a lot of other fantasy games as well, um, including some that I play like for money. So FPL is still like the outlet for me to do risky things in. I don't go too crazy. I just do something that still kind of fits within the mm. the model. Don't disapprove too much. Um, but I yeah, I'm happy to to. People can live vicariously through my crazy decisions towards the end of the season if they fancy. We will. Um, if I've fallen off, then double down. 
uh, go as low as you can. Um, yeah, back to back top one k would be quite nice. So um, maybe I'll I'll panic towards the end, but uh, yeah, I and we'll see we'll see what opens up. But I'm happy to start engaging in that risk, and that's a that's a fun thing to kind of evaluate. How do you play with risk rather than playing risk agnostic, which is kind of how I play at the start. We'll see. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Good luck, man. Good luck. Um, as I say, if you haven't done so already, make sure you like the video on the way out. And if you want to see more from Baker and myself, then hit subscribe. If you don't follow already, go over to X and follow JC at FPL underscore Spaceman. And uh, as we mentioned at the start, if you want to get involved with the analytics community, then join the Discord. The chat is, uh, the link is way earlier in the chat. But if you just ask someone, they'll, someone will have a link that you can share. I'll tell you what, I'll put, I'll put another link down in the description as well. Everyone message JC on Twitter. I'm yeah, sure yeah, they'll love it. Up. Just add yeah. him up. Hit him up. Yeah, yeah. I'll reply to all of them. Don't worry. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Um, thanks for everyone in the chat for being here and uh, we will see you on Sunday, I guess. Sunday to review four games. Good luck, guys. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All four of them. Burnley Can't Brentford, 5-5. Five, five. What a game. Can't wait. <laughs> see you Cheers, later. guys. Bye.